So what is there to explain about candles? Well, first of all, what makes them burn for so long? Also, why are some parts of the candle flame blue while others appear yellow or red? The answer to that, by the way, does not have to do with temperature differences. Why does the candle's wick curve outwards as it burns? I'm going to answer all these questions and then show you a cool party trick you can use to impress your friends with just a candle and a lighter at the end of the video. Let's start by looking at what you see when you look at a candle flame. In the very center of the flame around the wick, there's a small dark area. Then around that, the candle flame starts to get brighter and brighter yellow. And at the very edges in the bottom of the flame, there's some blue. So what's going on here chemically? Well, the overall reaction that's occurring is the burning of the wax. So the wick is not actually what's burning, the wax is. The wax becomes liquefied, drawn up into the wick, then vaporized by the heat, and then burns. And the wax in most modern candles is a material called paraffin, which is long chains of carbon with hydrogen on either side. And these molecules are broken apart and combined with oxygen from the air to form carbon dioxide and water molecules. This means that if you burn a paraffin candle cleanly, you're actually turning all of the wax molecules with surrounding air into new molecules of water and CO2. A cool experiment you can do to demonstrate this is to take a cool object, like the spoon that was in the fridge, and hold it above the candle. You should see water start to condense on the object, and this water is actually new water molecules that were formed during combustion. This chemical reaction requires oxygen to occur, and it turns out that the only place that oxygen is available to mix with the fuel is actually at the very edges of the flame. So if we go back to our diagram, we can see that the parts of the candle flame that appear to be blue actually represent the areas where the combustion reaction is taking place. And it turns out that these blue areas actually surround the entire visible flame. It's just harder to see them towards the top because the yellow light of the flame is more prevalent and blocks out the fainter blue light surrounding it. I'll get back to why these areas are blue in a bit, but first let's talk about the innermost part of the flame that appears yellow. So if I've told you that the actual combustion is only occurring at a thin layer at the very outside of the flame, what's going on, on the inside? Let's start at the innermost dark zone of the candle flame. This is where the wax molecules first vaporize, and when they do, they take a lot of heat energy with them away from the candle wick. So this ends up actually being the coolest part of the flame. But as these newly vaporized paraben molecules start to wander out towards the outer reaction zones, which are generating a lot of heat, they start to heat up. But keep in mind, there's no oxygen in the center of the flame, because it's all being used up as it hits the hot molecules at the edges and burns with them. So in this oxygenless environment, the paraffin molecules get hotter and hotter, and the only thing this heat energy can do is to break them up. So through a complicated series of chemical changes, they start to change their form. And what ends up happening is that larger and larger clumps of carbon start grouping together into large molecules of thousands or even millions of carbon atoms, all together in these misshapen molecules. These carbon molecules start to heat up, and when they get hot enough, they start to glow just like a hot poker. So this is actually where the yellowish light of a candle flame comes from. It's just very, very hot particles of carbon, which we know as soot. This is called the luminous or carbon zone of the candle flame. So you can think of a candle flame as being a little cloud of very, very hot carbon molecules, which as they reach the edges of the flame actually burn off when they come in contact with oxygen. And you can show that this is true by taking that cold object of yours and lowering it into the luminous part of the flame. You'll see that it quickly becomes coated with a dark film. And these are all of the carbon molecules, the soot, that are not burned yet and are cooling off as they hit the object and unable to burn. You've probably encountered these particles escaping as what you'd call smoke in other conditions when the upper part of the flame becomes too cool for them to fully combust. So for example, if you have a candle in a drafty room and it begins to flicker, then some of the carbon molecules can cool off enough that they don't burn when they reach the oxygen or in the surrounding air, and they're then released as smoke. So this is why candles in drafty areas tend to smoke more. Another situation that leads to smoke is if there's too much vaporized paraffin, and the candle can't burn at all before it cools off. This can happen when the wick is either too wide or too long. And in fact, in the old days, the candle wicks used to get longer and longer since they were in the center of the flame where there's little oxygen and they were being cooled off by the vaporizing paraffin. They wouldn't burn. So as the candle wick got longer and longer, eventually the flame would start to smoke. And what they'd have to do is trim the candle wick fairly frequently to keep from getting soot all over the place. Most modern candles have a very clever solution to this where their wicks are actually braided flat rather than round. And just like newspaper, which is flat and curls when it burns, the flat wick tends to curl off to the side as the candle burns down. And what this means is that the wick will poke out into the reaction zone, the glowing blue part of the flame, where oxygen is available for combustion to occur, and they'll actually burn themselves down, so they're self-trimming as the candle burns. And this means that the size of the wick, and thus the amount of fuel available, is held constant. This means that our candles smoke much less, and it's also why, if you look closely, most candles have a curved wick. So let's go back to that reaction zone for a moment. Why is it blue? There's a common misconception that it's blue because it's hotter than the rest of the flame. 
and as things get hotter they shine more and more towards the blue end of the visible light spectrum. Now it is true that if you heat up something hot enough it'll start to glow blue, but we're talking 5,000 degrees or above, and realistically the only objects that reach those temperatures are things like very hot stars or lightning bolts. The candle itself only reaches about 1400 degrees Celsius. So what's actually going on in those blue zones? What's happening is a phenomenon called chemiluminescence. And these are chemical reactions where the molecules produced are produced in an excited state and they release light after being produced. So this is what happens in glow sticks, for example. So in candles, some of the molecules produced during the combustion process happen to glow in the bluish-green range of the light spectrum. And that's why those areas look blue to us. It so happens that those areas of the flames are actually the hottest, but that's only because the combustion reaction is very exothermic, so it releases a lot of heat. If the reaction itself happened to result in different molecules, that area of the flame could easily be a different color while still being the hottest. The last thing I want to share with you guys is a really cool party trick you can do right after blowing out a candle. You've probably noticed before that right after you blow out a candle, there's some whitish smoke that comes out. Well, it turns out that that's not actually smoke. What it is is condensed little tiny spherical particles of wax. So when the candle is burning, there is that dark zone of the candle flame where the wax is vaporized and enters the hotter parts of the flame. But when the flame is extinguished, there's still some vaporized wax coming out, but it has nowhere to burn. So instead it just floats into the air and condenses into little tiny balls of wax. So you can demonstrate that this smoke is actually still a viable fuel source, by bringing a naked flame into the column of wax soon after you've blown out the candle. And if you blow out the candle recently enough, there should be enough of a density of wax to actually catch on fire and burn down the column of rising wax particles and relight the candle wick without you actually having to touch it with your flame. So that is how candles work. Thanks for watching ExplainCast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please rate and subscribe, and if you have any suggestions for future shows, just message me at Twitter slash ExplainCast.